Welcome to Bonding Basics with Mr. Bohannon. The Georgia Science Standard that we will discuss is SPS 2. This physical science standard deals with the chemistry topic of matter and how it's classified. Specifically, we will be predicting chemical formulas for stable ionic compounds based on the balance of charges. Before we continue with our podcast, let's quickly review some of the important information that you've already learned about the periodic table. As you have learned, the periodic table is arranged by atomic number. The atomic number indicates each element's number of protons in the nucleus. Periods, which are the horizontal rows, indicate how many electron shells each row has. This means that every element in a period has the same number of electron shells. This means that elements in the fourth period have four electron shells. Hydrogen and helium are located in period 1 and have one electron shell. As we move into the next period, period 2, these elements have two electron shells. This pattern continues in periods 3, 4, 5, 6, and finally 7. Next we come to the columns. These columns are called families. These families share the same number of electrons in the, in the outer shell. These electrons determine how reactive or how happy each element is. These electrons in the outer shell are called valence electrons. The elements in the first family all have one valence electron. As we move from left to right across the periodic table, we increase the number of valence electrons in the outer shell from 1 on the far left hand side to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, and finally eight valence electrons in the outer shell. The elements on the far right hand side are called the noble gases. All of these elements have full outer shells and are happy. This means that they do not react with other elements or themselves. As you may have noticed, we kind of skipped over the transition metals. Since they are a special case, we'll talk about them a little bit later. We just looked at how the periodic table is structured. Now we will examine the importance of the valence electrons and what role they play in chemical bonding. First we need to become familiar with the octet rule. The octet rule is a simple chemical rule of thumb stating that all atoms want to have eight valence electrons in their outer shell, thus giving them the noble gas configuration and making the atom happy. So how do we know how happy atoms are? or how many electrons they must share or take from other atoms to become happy. We will look at the oxidation number to tell us this information. The oxidation numbers show the typical charge of an atom in a particular family. This charge is determined by how many valence electrons an element loses, takes, or shares with other electrons. As we look at the family in the first column, we notice that these elements have a plus one oxidation number. What does this mean? It means that since these elements have one valence electron in their outer shells, they will lose this valence electron to another atom. When the atom loses this electron, the atom now has one more proton than electron, thus the net charge of plus one. As we move into the second family, these elements have a plus two oxidation number. Like the elements in family one, they do not have the ability to take electrons. They lose these electrons to other atoms, thus giving these elements a net charge of plus two. Like the first two families, elements in family three lose their valence electrons, giving them a net charge of plus three. As we move into the fourth family, we have reached the halfway mark in having a complete outer shell according to the octet rule. This means that these electrons will either gain or lose electrons to other elements. Therefore, these elements will either have a positive or a negative net charge of four. Unlike the previous families, the next families are much closer to having complete outer shells. Family five has five valence electrons and needs three more to complete their outer shells. They can take these electrons from other atoms. And since they will take these three electrons, their net charge will be negative three. This means that they will have three more electrons than protons. The next family has six valence electrons. This means that they are looking for two more electrons. Therefore, these atoms will have a net charge of negative two. The family in our next group has seven valence electrons. To get eight valence electrons, these elements just need one electron. So these guys are going to take an electron from another atom, thus giving these atoms a net charge of negative one. 
Again, elements in our last group have complete outer shells. Because these elements have the same number of protons and electrons, they have a net charge of zero. Well, what about the transition metals? Transition metals have multiple oxidation states. These elements will tell you what their oxidation number is. This example shows the transition metal of iron, represented by Fe, parentheses contains the Roman numeral 3. This indicates that this atom of iron has an oxidation number of 3. Now that we've finished our quick review, let's continue with our podcast. Again, we're trying to predict formulas for stable binary ionic compounds. Remember, binary means 2. Therefore, we will be working with two elements, combining net charges to make a zero charge compound. Now let's work out a few examples. Let's take an atom of carbon and an atom of oxygen. We're going to combine these two atoms to form a compound. I look at my periodic table and determine the oxidation numbers for each element. Oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2. We're going to use the blocks here to help us visualize our reaction. Carbon has an oxidation number of plus or minus 4. But since oxygen has a negative charge, carbon will have a positive charge. Again, I'm going to use the blocks here to help us visualize. You should be able to see the relationship here between the valence electrons, oxidation numbers, and the blocks. We will keep a set of blocks at the top of the screen to remind us of what reaction we are performing. We begin with one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen. Notice that the negative 2 of the oxygen does not cover the plus 4 of the carbon. So we add an additional oxygen atom. The four of the carbon are now covered by the four of the two oxygen atoms. We now have one atom of carbon combined with two atoms of oxygen. This forms a neutral binary compound of carbon dioxide. Okay, for you math people out there, this is what happened. We started out with one carbon atom with a plus four charge. We added one atom of oxygen with a negative two charge. Since the net charge of the whole compound was plus 2, we had to add another atom of oxygen. This gave us a neutral compound with a net charge of 0. Let's work out another example. This time let's take an atom of hydrogen and an atom of oxygen. We're going to combine these two atoms to form a binary compound. Again, I look at my periodic table and determine the oxidation numbers for each element. Oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2. Like before, we're going to use the blocks to help visualize our reaction. Hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus 1. As in the previous example, we will keep a set of blocks on the top of the screen to remind us of what reaction we're performing. We begin with one atom of oxygen and one atom of hydrogen. Notice that the plus 1 of the hydrogen does not cover the minus 2 of the oxygen. We add an additional hydrogen atom. Now the two of the oxygen are covered by the two of the hydrogen. We now have one atom of oxygen combined with two atoms of hydrogen to form a neutral binary compound, dihydrogen oxide, or commonly known as water. I hope these examples will give you a good starting place for forming binary compounds based on the balance of charges. Check out my edgy blog on the web for additional resources and examples at www.bohannon.edublogs.org. This podcast was made in association with the Kennesaw Mountain Writing Project, the site of the National Writing Project. You can find them on the web at www.kmwp.org. Thanks.